Good evening, uh, dear listeners. Καλησπέρα σα, uh, καλοί τηλεθεατέ. Να μου επιτρέψετε πριν προχωρήσω και γυρίσω και στην Αγγλική να ευχαριστήσω τον χορηγό μα, τον Δ. Βασίλη Μαύρου και το Βαρόσι Λέφιγκ που μα στηρίζουν όπω πάντα. Ευχαριστούμε πάντα τον Δ. Μαύρου για την uh, στήριξή σα. Να είστε καλά. And uh, I'd like to welcome my uh, guest for tonight. It's Sula Christodoulou. It's um, an author. Kalispera Sula, good evening to you. Kalispera Vasilimo. Tikanis, how are you? Polikala, uh, Kharisto. Considering everything that's going on, I'm very well. Thank you. You and I hope you are too. I am very well, thank you very much. Uh, keeping safe and uh, well, you know, just taking care. This is what you have to do until you know things are going to be better and you know be able to um, you know go around and just uh, do uh, uh, normal um, you know uh, uh, things and all this. But um, you know, uh, as um, you know this. Uh, during this uh, last year, many people like you, they get the chance to do something, you know, to use their time. And because you are a writer, you wrote uh, another book. I have written another book, yeah. I mean, in all honesty, I think last time I spoke to you, which was the summer of the year before, so in 2019, I was already working on the book. Ah, you were working on that, that did you? Right, yes, yeah, so I finished it last year and edited it. And I actually managed to secure a publisher for it as well, because my other two books I self-published, which was a lot of hard work um, and still is a lot of hard work. But having a publisher sort of fighting my corner now makes it a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel like I'm doing everything on my own. I've got someone to turn to for advice and help. So it's um it's been it's been a very good experience so far. Yeah. So uh, this is the first book that you are uh, having a publisher for, yeah. Right. Yes, it's my third novel, but the first one that where I'm being represented by a publisher. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, do you think things are going to be even better now with a publisher and uh, easier to uh, make their book uh, known to people? I'm not sure, to be honest. I mean, the book, in terms of its um, the the avenues that it's being advertised on, is is much further spread. It's not just on Amazon. So it's on iPhone Books. It's in Foils, Waterstones, W. H. Smith. So from that perspective, um, I think it's it's open to to a wider market and. A, a lot more eyes will be on the book. Um, it's a bit early to tell how well it will do, but um, initial indications are that it's already doing very well. So I'm really pleased. Um, uh -huh. It came out at the beginning of December, so it's only been out a month or so. Yeah, it's a very, um, I mean, I can't say unusual story because there are so many stories starting through the social media you know, relationships and all this kind of thing. And this is one of them. I mean, your story is yeah. based on people that using their social media and they're coming together and get to know each other and start new life or might be, you know, um, don't succeed or whatever. But is this idea came just, you know, from your imagination or it was something that you have in mind, you have a story, true story in mind, where the where this story came from? Um, it initially started actually because of all the negativity in the media about the safety of meeting people online, uh -huh. and I just felt that actually lots of positives can come out of meeting people online as well. So, for example, you and I would never have met had it not been for me meeting Gaderina on Instagram. So it got me thinking, and you know me, I, li I like romance. I'm a romance author. And I just wanted to turn that kind of idea on its head. I, I wanted to show people that actually sometimes something really great can happen 
out of social media. And I also um, coincidentally um, connected with a man who has cerebral palsy and just talking to him and just listening to what he has to cope with on a day to day basis got me thinking about the social media, his cerebral palsy, falling in love, relationships. And that kind of sowed the seed and got me thinking and developing the story that ended up being, here it is. Ah, yes. Lovely. Alexandria. I'm looking forward to read it, uh, Sula. I hope so. I'll have to send you a copy. Yes, you do. You have to keep me busy because of the lockdown. I have no many things to do. So uh, my next thing to do is when I receive your book, I just you know, uh, read it in one night. Um, I can yeah. promise. Yes. You won't be able to put it down. It's had some really fantastic reviews already. So, yeah, a copy well, is on it. Yes. Well, reading the synopsis, you know what I mean? I realized that there is um, plenty of, um, you know, action. I mean, it is a romantic story, but there is plenty of action and involves other um, you know, uh, people in as well. Can you tell me, uh, talking about, uh, you know, the, the, the main characters, yes. is, this, is this character the main character, an existing person? Is somebody you know? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, don't, I don't know any of the people personally, no, but the two main characters are are built from from different people that I know but mainly from my imagination uh -huh. although obviously anything to do with cerebral palsy I've researched and I've spoken to more than one person who has cerebral palsy and I've also had a sensitivity reader which is somebody who reads the parts in a book to make sure that anything I've written isn't going to offend anybody mm -hmm. because I to be careful the way that I uh, I presented Alexander in the book in terms of his feelings, his actions, um, his physical disability, um, his emotions surrounding his disability, because obviously, um, you know, the people with, with cerebral palsy are people like you and I. Um, they think the same, they feel the same, they have the same hopes and dreams. And the main character, Alexander, in my book, is actually very stifled. So the social media actually brings something out in him and it encourages him to be bolder and kind of take life by the horns and really do what he feels passionate about. And Maria is the catalyst. It is she who actually opens his eyes to what he really feels, what he's lacking, what he wants out of life. Mm -hmm. Would you mind telling us, you know, more about the book? I mean, the the, the story expand the story and give us more information. I mean, as much as you can, because you obviously you want people to read the book and find out. But give us more, you know, but, uh, based your, um, you know, uh, what you're going to say on the synopsis. Just you know. Well, in its most simple, simple format or simple summary, um, you have a married man, Alexander. Um, he's very unhappy in his marriage. He's not satisfied in any way, whether that's emotionally, physically, intellectually. So um, him and his wife are, are, are quite detached. Uh, they have very little to connect them anymore after being married for over 20 years. Um, he inadvertently uh, links with Maria, who's an author, on Twitter, and they build up a friendship. And then their friendship leads to something more. And actually, he crosses the line. So there is, um, there is the subject of infidelity in the book, which I know some people might find uncomfortable. But at the end of the day, I think infidelity in life you know, across across all all cultures and and all walks of life, um, is something that that people know about. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. I think infidelity has its has its own you know place in in the reading market though. Um, so they cross the line, 
And initially their relationship is carried out across Twitter, but then they do eventually meet in London. Alexander lives in Inverness. So there's some beautiful descriptions of Inverness as well in, in the book. Um, I won't give away the ending because there are a few little hiccups along the way. So you do wonder, will they end up together or will they not? Okay. Uh, you have the chance to write the second version. I mean, second, uh, carry on the story. Second book based on the same story because there is expansion because I, I've seen that at the end. There is a girl involved, you know, the daughter of uh, the main character, of the woman character. So you can expand it, you know, and, and see their, their relationships uh, going and where do they go and uh, how they going to end, you know. Yeah. I, I don't plan to write a sequel. I've, I'm very much into standalone books. Even as a reader, I prefer to read standalone books than I do se series. Um, however, I have had some people contact me already saying, what happens to Sandra, for example, who is Alexander's wife? What happens to Natalie, who is Maria's daughter? What happens to Callum, Alexander and Sandra's son? Uh -huh. uh, so, so there could be a spin-off. I'm, I'm not saying there will be. Could be. Yeah, no, if, I mean, yes, it's, it's a possibility, if, yes. And so I won't say never, because, you know, never is a long time. You never say yeah, never. But not at the moment. I'm not planning. Never yeah. say never, no, of course. <laughs> so, um, I mean, how can anyone uh, find out about it? And how can they um, buy the book or um, get it to read? Well, at the moment, it's available across a number of platforms, Vasily Moore. You can buy it on Amazon, which is one of the biggest sellers of books. But you can also buy it online at Waterstones, WH Smith, Foils. It's available on iBooks. It's available even on eBay. Don't ask me how or why, but, uh, you, know, can, you know. The ones they wanted to buy it, they can find a ways to buy it, yes. Definitely find a way to buy it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, when was the book uh, ready? I mean, how long uh, ago it was, uh, you know, it, available? It came out as an e-book on the 2nd of December, and one of the reasons why my publisher rushed it through is because he's nominated it for um, a prize. It's the Ondarchi Prize 2021, okay. which is um, it's a literary award sponsored by the Royal Society of Literature. Mm -hmm. So we, he pushed the book for it to be out and in the market before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So it was available as an ebook on the 2nd of December. And then from the 28th of December, the paper book, paperback was available. But I do have a number of paperbacks here as well. So if any of your audience wants to contact me for a signed copy, because I've already sent out quite a few, um, I'll be more than happy to sign a copy for anyone who'd like, like a Lovely. personal copy. Beautiful, beautiful. So uh, at the moment you're resting, you're just having a rest or? I'm not really, no. I've got so much going on. I've. I've taken on some social media support work for another author. So I'm working on that on a daily basis. I'm editing um, a historical fiction novel. It's 1960s novel. It's a crime novel. So I'm busy doing that for another author. Mm -hmm. And I'm also drafting and working my next book called The Village House, which you will absolutely love. It's set in Cyprus. Oh, okay. So I'm really busy, Vasily Moore, and I've become a grandmother as well. So I've ah, got my little... Ah, nice. Yeah, yeah. You're a yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, oh, the, the best feeling in the world, oh, honestly. Oh, lovely, lovely. I'm, I'm very happy to hear that. Yeah. Yes. Very nice. Congratulations, yes. Okay, yes. so uh, future plans is to write the, your a new book, The Village House, yeah? Yes. Which is, yeah. uh, um, I suppose, going to be based on uh, your family or, you know, uh, it's back in Cyprus not really. years ago? It's set in Cyprus. It's present day, so it's up to date. Um, so it's a contemporary novel. Um, 
the story kind of came about because I remember my yaya before she died, she promised me her house in the village. Ah, okay. And uh, nothing ever came of that because she didn't leave a will. So the house automatically went to my father, his brother and his sister. Okay. Um, still there, but it but it's not mine. Um, and it just, I don't know, it just got me thinking about, you know, the village house and, you know, how it rightfully could belong to somebody and how would that happen uh-huh. so it's about it's about a uk cypriot woman who inherits a house in cyprus it's about you it, about you <laughs> it's, it's not really about me but the idea came from from the words of my yaya years ago yes, it kind yes. of me that she promised me the house but You know, like a lot of people, if it isn't written down in a will, then that doesn't happen, um, you know, which is fine. It's, you know, it's not an issue. I'm not saying it's an issue, but that kind of planted a seed in my mind. So hence the village house is, is a book yeah. about a lady who inherits a, a house in a village in Cyprus and the story surrounding that. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yes. Lovely. Uh, so, how you deal with uh, you know I mean, the last year with the uh, you know uh, pandemic? I mean, you know what? It was very very hard the first time. The first lockdown was really difficult. Just before we went into lockdown, me and two of my sons were um, diagnosed with COVID. Oh my god! I was, I was wiped out for about 18 days. To the point that I actually thought I wouldn't make it. I was telling my eldest son where to find the papers for my will because I was so worried. But oh thankfully God. and thank God, yeah. I'm here and we're all okay. Um, but it was a tough time. There were six adults in one house and we were, you know, in lockdown. It was very, very, it was a difficult time. I know. Probably more difficult than than other people, but you know, six adults in one house, you know, just the noise and and just managing on a day-to-day basis with cooking and cleaning and washing. And that that was quite tiresome. Then, of course, the summer came and that felt a little bit easier. We were able to go out and get some fresh air and exercise. Um, I went on a diet. I lost oh, nearly good. two stone. Yeah, I nearly I feel so idea, much yes. I nearly, you know, didn't recognize you. Yes, I mean, yeah, you lose weight. Yes, yeah, you look younger as well. Yeah, I have. My- yeah, oh, thank you. Thank yes, you. yes. A- so, um, a family is uh, your family. How many children you have? Do you say all together? Three boys. Three boys. Yeah. Yeah, my youngest is at university, but because of COVID, he spent most of his time back home. So that's been difficult because he's been stressed with university work and keeping up with assignments and exams. My eldest is a personal trainer. So, of course, gym's closed. Uh-huh. So of course his income was completely wiped out on, off, on, off, on, off. So it's been really difficult, really difficult. Um, but we've managed, you know, like everybody, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. find way to get through we have to be positive thankfully we're all well now mum and dad have just had their vaccines as well oh that's good so, that's good news yes yeah so well I'm hoping it is I'm I'm in two minds about the vaccine if I'm honest but they went ahead and had it done it was their choice um so so far so good Well, uh, I don't want to uh, comment and, uh, you know, uh, talk about this, uh, uh, you know, uh, situations about uh, how they feel, people, how they feel to have the vaccine. But, you know, looking and listening to experts, I think the only way to get out of it is uh, by vaccinated, uh, vaccinating so many, as many as they can. You know what I mean? This is important. Yes. Anyway, it's, yeah. it's, it's decision is made by the individuals, you know. That's right. It it is it yeah. is, and so hopefully we're moving to a to a safer safer environment for all of us because yeah. I think many people have really struggled during the pandemic. Um, uh-huh. I, know, I know I sound like I'm complaining because I had a full house, but actually, better a full house than sitting on my own in a house. And not having anyone to talk to or 
you know, yeah. no company, no, you know, yeah. I think that would be really, really difficult. Yeah, yeah, there are so many stories about this, uh, you know, coronavirus and about people uh, living alone and people having, uh, you know, uh, breakdowns and, uh, you know, uh, so many problems. And, you know, I mean, I have uh, experience from uh, friends. They call me, they've been calling me five, six times a day until the 12, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. And I had to listen. And because they need somebody to talk to. So we have to be understandable and give, give the, the people chances, you know, to um, get over the, the anxiety and all this. Yeah. So, but some people, they, um, they try to do what you do. I mean, they experiment in writing and all this kind of thing. What do you, uh, what, is, what is your advice? I mean, for, one, for someone who wanted to write a novel, write something, what, what is your advice? What do they have to look for and what, how they can start and what do they have to, uh, what, what are the, you know, um, rules about this? Oh, there's, there's so many rules and I'm, I'm still learning myself, to be honest. There, there's a lot of really good um, books on the craft of writing. One of my favourites is called, is called First. First, you write a sentence by Joe Moran. It's absolutely fantastic. It's almost written as a fiction book, but it has so many tips and advice on sentence structure and the use uh -huh. of language and flow, even to the extent of how much white paper appears on a page between the... Mm. Very interesting. ...as a reader. Um, and I find that book absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah. But my, my advice really is just write. There, there's no right or wrong. You know, ev ev you know, they say everyone has a story inside of them. And that's where it's going to stay unless you actually put pen to paper or fingers on a keyboard and, and you write it out. Yes. Um, and once it's out there, then you've got something to work with, to reread, to, to change to edit, to do your rewrites, um, joining a group if you can. I know it's difficult now, but there's lots of online support available. Um, Curtis Brown Creative is a wonderful online support. So they're uh, famous publishers who also support authors on their writing journey. So I actually, during the pandemic, um, wrote a fifth novel, based on the advice of Curtis Brown Creative and what they sent every day. They sent like a little workshop every day to support your writing. So there's lots of support out there. Um, you know, Instagram, we're, we're a really supportive yeah. group of people. We all like to help each other. We don't hold things close. It's not, it's not competitive like some industries are. You know, if I can help somebody, I will. Yeah. And, I do, I do support lots of authors. I do mentoring online now, obviously, because, again, yeah. we can't meet face-to-face. -face. But it's, yeah. it's a really, just, I don't just deal with your, your emotions as well. Yeah. Emotions, any worries. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. So are there any times when you start writing something and, you know, I mean, uh, have your uh, mind on uh, a structure and, and uh, and um, how to expand the character. And suddenly we realize, ah, it's better if I go that way instead of this way. And change yeah. your direction, yeah? I still more all the, t all the time. I know it okay. sounds really strange, but once you start writing, you know, you have an idea in your head, but once you start writing, your characters can take you anywhere. I mean, the ending for Alexander Maria, is so different to what I envisaged initially when I first thought about writing the book. Um, and I actually went through three different endings before I finally decided on this one, yeah. partly based on um, feedback from a critique group that I belong to. Mm -hmm. So uh, we support each other, we read each other's work and we give each other feedback and advice. You know, have you thought of this? Why don't you do that or add that or change this? Um, 
And that's really helpful as well, because at the end of the day, you want the book to connect with as many people out there as possible. You know, they say write for yourself. And to a degree, yes, I do. It's my story. But like I said before, I'd hate to offend anyone or upset anybody. Um, you know, so I am careful how I write things. And, you know, I, I do listen to my characters because very often they're right and they do steer me. It might be a different route, but it's at the end of the day, it ends up being the right path. So, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So did you have to uh, meet or talk to many people about uh, you know, the characters to find out about, you know, situations or uh, talking about the last book you wrote? Yeah, I did. Um, so um, I connected with a number of different people that have cerebral palsy, um, all, all different levels of cerebral palsy because there's cerebral palsy that affects upper limbs and lower limbs or just lower limbs. Um, sometimes it can affect speech. Sometimes it can affect um, the processing of information. So I spoke to a number of different people to get my character right. Um, I also spoke to a number of females who have taken part or, you know, in online dating uh -huh. or have had ex meeting people across social media. Uh, because again, I, I wanted to get it right. I didn't want to I didn't want to trivialize anything. I, wa I wanted people to read the book and think, yeah, this feels really real because I like to write real stories that people can connect with, characters that people can empathize with. Um, and I think Alexander isn't the easiest of characters to empathize with, but by the end of the book, readers will really be rooting for him and they'll really want things to work out for him. Lovely, beautiful. So, um, any other projects you are involved in, except of, uh, you know, preparing yourself for uh, the new book, uh, Village House? Yeah, well, I have I have the, the fifth book written in first draft mode, but it's a very, very rough first draft. It's about 42, 43,000 words, and I've called it A Palette of Magpies. And it's a little bit magical, oh, okay. um, set in England, in a village, yeah. about a retired art teacher. So, um, again, very, very different. You know, um, I'm quite quirky like that. I, I, I get bored quite easily, Vasily Moore. So I can't write books all about Cyprus all the time. I can't write books yeah, all yeah. about, you know, so and and. You know, the, the way I read is the way I like to write as well. So all my books are very, very different. You know, it's not it's not like you pick up my book and every book will have the same theme. I mean, they, they're all romance, but they're all very, very different in their setting, in their characters, in their themes. Uh -huh. um, so this last one is, yeah, it's very magical. There's something quite mysterious and magical about the main character, oh, which true. again... Yeah. It must have uh, plenty of fantasy. Yeah, it's not quite fantasy. It's almost like not a gut instinct, but the next level. You know, when some people have that feeling, they kind of know what's going to happen before it happens, or they know how to behave in a situation before a situation happens. It's more like that. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Good. Very interesting. Okay, it, it was nice to see you, you know. And you, and, uh, so much. You know, uh, looking forward to see you in person, you know, when things are get better, you know, when we are able to, you know, get together and uh, have a conversation, have a coffee or whatever, you know what I mean? I hope this is going to be very soon. And I wish you all the best with uh, the book. Thank you. Efarisubaraboli. I really appreciate it. It's been lovely talking to you. Και εγώ ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ. Και did, did you ever thought uh, of um, translating uh, Alexander uh, and Maria in Greek as well? Or? Um, not at the moment. No, that's a really big project, a really huge project. I'm yeah. about 50,000 words translating The Summer Will Come. So... 
I still, I'm only a third of the way through working yeah. alongside a translator. So, yeah, so, but who knows? Yeah. One day. So the first book that is going to be in, in Greek is uh, uh, your previous one, yes? Yes, it will be the summer. Come, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. Lovely. Thank you very much again. Silly more. Thank you. It's lovely seeing you. Say Love. thank you to say thank you to the crew. I know George is there and everyone else. Everybody, as well. George, Savas, Dr. Felas, uh, the girls who have three girls in the back room. They are work, oh. working distance. Yeah. Uh, keep distance. They are away from me. You know what I mean? Oh. Uh, we keep yeah. we keep the distance, you know, the rules, you know what I mean? Yes. But uh, mm -hmm. when the time comes, we get together and just, uh, you know, invite you to a studio, sit here and have a coffee with us, you know. We're all for those days to come back, aren't we? Thank you. Thank you. It's nice to see you. You look beautiful. Thank you. Have a Galilee. good night. Before you I too. go, na mo epitrepsete, na po ena megalo chaisto ke ston chori gomas. I have to say thank you to our... Uh, a sponsor as well, Dr. Uh, uh, Vasilis Mavru and uh, Varosi Lettings for, um, you know, our um, good relationship. And thank you, Sula. And have a good night and uh, looking forward to see you soon again. And good luck with the book. Thank you very much. Kalinikta. Thank you. Kalinikta. <laughs>